Welcome to Reformed Jellicle, where the Reformed and Evangelicals meet. My name is Matt Williams. I'm co-hosted by the great A.D. Robles, the man of our time, A.D. Robles. How are you doing today? Let's just say I'm pretty good. I don't want to say great. I'm pretty good. <laughs> it was a crazy week, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it was. It's been, it's, been, it's been something. I mean, it's been a crazy few weeks, but last week in particular, woo! Oh, my goodness. I would, I'm hesitant to say that, like, let's see how next week tops it and like yeah. be skeptical about it but i have no doubt in my mind next week's gonna even be crazier uh yeah seriously it's like you're, you're absolutely right because on the one hand like the things that are happening there's a there's definitely an element of humor to it and it's really enjoyable to watch things like aunt jemima get canceled and and uh and uncle ben whatever his name is like stuff like that it's it's very humorous mm-hmm. but there's also a serious side to it so i kind of don't want to top it i know <laughs> It's very strange. It's a very strange world we live in. Before the show, we were talking about how Vody Bachman was on the Glenn Beck show for a whole hour, mm. a whole hour, where the Mormon is promoting the conservative Christian while we have Big Eva going as far away from conservative Christianity as possible. Like, what kind of Twilight Zone is it? It's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, I, you know, I, I, Glenn Beck's cool, you know, and all that, but you're right. It's like, why does it take a Mormon? To, to platform this guy and to and to signal boost what he's saying and stuff like that. Why is that what it takes? I just don't mm-hmm. understand. Yeah. Um, there's just an un there's an unwillingness to to really hear any kind of alternative perspective. There's an unwillingness. Not only is there an unwillingness, but there's there's almost a uh, antagonism towards any of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Vadi Bakum, I mean, you know, he's used to it, but you know, he'll get called all kinds of things <laughs> oh, yeah. because of this kind of stuff. And uh, anyway, but yeah, it's just crazy. It's it's not even like. There's, there's no respect at all <laughs> for, for no. people with the alternative viewpoint. None. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No respect at all. No respect at all. I was also <laughs> listening to Joe Rogan, and he had uh, one of the atheists on. I forgot his name. So um, many of them. There's so many of them nowadays. But he's like one of the guys who is – he is a Democrat. He's like a liberal, but he's very anti-social justice, and he oh, understands yeah. what it is. There's a growing number of those. So there's a very – yeah. Yeah, but the most interesting thing, and this kind of ties into Vody Bachman, is that they don't have any solutions. They don't know what the answer is. They can't offer a replacement for the issues that they see, and right. it's like the world is desperate for the right. Vody Bachmans of the world to be platformed, right? Because he has the answer. We have the answer. The gospel, that's right? And I think that's one of the reasons you had sixty thousand views on one of your shows. Congrats sure. to that. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Someone's got to brag for I you. Don't, I don't know what I did differently, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I better figure that out if I'm going to catch lightning in a bottle, right? I know. <laughs> oh, isn't it the like saddest thing in the world, though? You have this like really great show, and then you kind of go back to normal. You're like, what happened, guys? Where'd you go? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll take um, it. I'll take and it. before we go on, I just want to say again, thank you to um, Phil Johnson for being on the show last yeah. week. If there was ever a reason to cancel or not come on the show... It's your birthday, and you find out you had cancer. I didn't want to say it on the show because I didn't know if you wanted to make it public, but he, I saw yeah. that he did. Right away, yeah. yeah. Right away. He like I guess he found out mo- like a little bit before he came on the show and still came on. I mean, that's just a Stand- testament to the, that guy. He's a stand-up guy, no question about it. And I, I felt, I don't know about you, Matt, but um, I felt like that was one of the best interviewers, interviews we ever had, and we've had some great ones. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But it was just very practical and very straight-talking. You know, let's just be honest. All the guests that we've ever had have been straight talking. No question about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But he's got, but he's got a little bit of an edge to him, you know, which I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, I was really interested because he's kind of in the. He is in the MacArthur camp. He's not kind of in the MacArthur camp. No question. Camp. Yeah, yeah. He is, and so his kind of perspectives are a little different than ours. Not that he's not on no our question. team or not no on question, our side. Yeah. And so it was interesting to get his take on it, which I thought was really good. Yeah, it's it's a good thing when brothers dwell in harmony and unity. It's a good mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, we're gonna have to get him back on the show for actual disagreements and see how it goes. See how how far it goes. Well, listen, the listen. I, I would love to do that, but there's more pressing business at hand right now. You know, there absolutely. I, mean? is. I was I was thinking about. So there's this guy. Uh, I I'm pretty sure you've followed his tweets. Uh, an atheist named James Lindsay. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's been on fire by the way lately. His tweets are just amazing, um, <laughs> and. Um, I, I felt like reaching out to him because I probably could reach out to him personally. I, I think I could figure out his his. You know, I think we have connections with each other, put it that way. Yeah, um, I know your connections and I know you could get to him with those. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I felt like reaching out to him and saying, Hey man, I would love one day 
to debate you about atheism when this is all over. But right now, <laughs> we've got some pressing business. <laughs> <laughs> if we survive. <laughs> listen, listen, I'll tell you right now, look, look, the, the reality is that atheism can't save you any more than wokeism can. Um, but atheism <laughs> isn't trying to take over the entire country and the entire Western civilization and overturn it. Let's right. just face it. They're not doing that. Yeah, atheism still, is like the liber, libertarian of the, the religious world. Right. For the most part, in in the Western world, atheism is content to live on a lot of Christian borrow capital. They're fine with that. Right. Um, there's obviously inconsistencies there, but but a lot of the traditional stuff that they support uh, is straight up Christian, and so they're not the big problem right now. <laughs> Let's just mm -hmm. face it. Yeah, I know for sure. It is funny. I, I'm kind of okay with where we're at now. If we do just have atheists that are happy to live off of our capital, uh, like, right. I'm cool with that at this point. I'm mean, cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this could be my neighbor. Yeah. Well, this is the thing too. You know, a lot of people poo poo cultural Christianity, and I actually don't. I mean, look, cultural Christianity can't save you. But if you ha if you live as a cultural Christian, um, life would be much more harmonious. There's just no question about it. Like. You know, I think it was Nineveh. There was one. What was the what was the the nation state, the city state that repented when Jonah went to? I think it was Nineveh. Yeah, yeah. Nineveh. Yeah. Yeah. So they repented, and then God relented from the disaster He was going to do on them, and their repentance led to positive results, mm -hmm. even though they didn't necessarily convert to to the Lord. The fact that they repented from what they were doing, they stopped what they were doing, they became culturally more acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, that had positive results for everybody. So you can't save you, but it's a good thing. Interesting. So you don't think they were saved, huh? I know that's not your point well, at all, not, but. <laughs> well, yeah. So not the, like, I don't think the entire city was saved. If that, if that's what you mean, like every down to the last man. You just killed um, the whole story for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, listen, I'm not saying that none of them were saved, no. but uh, anyway, but that's a side issue. What are you, what are you, why, <laughs> what are you doing? Because <laughs> that story is so cool. Like a whole city gets saved and you crush my dreams and spirit. <laughs> It's like well, not enough I'm bad not, news. Maybe I'm just negative Nancy on that one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so the point is, though, the point is, though, that if people live as cultural Christians, look, it's not going to save you. It's not the answer to all our problems. But life will be a lot better to live as a cultural Christian than it would be to live as a cultural pagan. Oh, 100 percent. And I know this. I grew up in cultural pagan California. Sure. And now I live in Florida and yeah. life is good. And I'm not right. even saying like just because there's Christians, like you said, like there's homosexuals. That sure. are living off the Christian uh, culture where people are nice. They say hi to each other. They actually care about what you have to say. Yeah. That's the uh, antithesis of the pagans who are all about myself and how I look and what can you do for me? Even yeah. the, even those people that deny God outright are still like having those effects of the post christian -ness culture. And well, the, 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 the problem, the thing is that things have gotten so crazy that, that even just basic stuff is like 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 did you see the new saint andrews commercial there's a a new uh video commercial for new saint andrews college no. where basically the entire commercial is just a, a, a boy and a girl heading to um a place where there's like bathrooms in a park and uh -huh. the boy goes into the boy's room the woman's the girl goes into the girl's room and it says we're, we're, we're not majors in like we're not experts in science but we know science better than the supreme court and it's, <laughs> it's a good commercial and it's like but that's basically all it takes. All you have to do is recognize, hey, there's a difference between the male sex and the female sex. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, life will be much better than the way the pagan upside down universe wants to work, operate. <laughs> yeah, it's not for sure. Oh, my gosh. Have you been paying attention to any of those rulings that have been coming out this last have, week? Uh, not not closely and not deeply, but but I have been paying attention. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's just terrible. It's not even terrible because it's obviously not constitutional. They're writing their own legislation. Right. But even their reasoning on things right. is so elementary. You expect it from Facebook and Twitter, like the trolls. And, and gospel Yeah, the gospel coalition. <laughs> uh, but not from the justices, the highest you know, authority in the land when it comes to administering justice. It's just absolutely insane. And that's the real problem too, the, the way that people think and the way they reason through things, because right now things are just ad hoc. Like the way you reason over here doesn't really affect the rest of your life. Everyone's just kind of living by the seat of their pants, just living in the moment. It doesn't matter what you said five minutes ago. It's what you're saying now. And so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that five minutes, five minutes ago, you were complaining that there were no uh, black cultural icons. Today we're canceling on Jemima. <laughs> today we're canceling so-and-so you understand like it doesn't matter what you said yesterday today yeah. it's different and so 
basically you have to live in a constant state of slavery where you're always just like, okay, what's the mob? Cause people joke about this. They're like, okay, what am I supposed to be mad at today? But there's, there's literally people who live that way. Mm-hmm. That they're like, okay, what do I have to be denouncing today? What do I have to, what do I have to be mad at today? And what do I have to avoid today? And then tomorrow it could be op- opposite and you just have to constantly be a slave to this. Mm-hmm. Um, let me tell you guys, it's, it's fun to be free. It's <laughs> fun to be free because the, the, the reality is not that we have no rules. I just, I, I, all I care about is what God says. He never changes. And so if God said yesterday that a, a, a woman can't be a preacher, then today I believe a woman can't be a preacher regardless of what the culture is saying. It's a lot of fun to do that because it riles people up to say something basic like, hey, woman, go home. <laughs> yeah, you, know. Uh, you know what uh, I mean? I and know. It's, it's so true. It's the same thing with God. People always got – I'm, a, I'm a, on a little bit of a tear here. I hope you don't mind. Go for it. It's the same thing when people start to like quote scripture to their advantage when they think they've got you. So you say something that's a little aggressive, maybe a little bit off-putting. And they say, well, you're su- you're not supposed to be a reviler because reviling is a sin. You say, well, what's, what's reviling? He says, well, saying things in an offensive way, that's reviling. And I say, oh, so Jesus was a reviler then <laughs> because he, he offended Pharisees consistently, intentionally. And it's like, well, no, that's different. You're not Jesus. So you see, that's the thing. So they, today they're saying, well, that's, br- that's bad. Back then, they know they can't say that's bad. So they're just constantly a slave to whatever the vernacular is of the day. And I'm over here just saying it's fun to be free. I know, man. It's, it's nice not to be double-minded like it talks about in James. Amen. I think I think James is like va- basically talking about what you're saying. That You go back and forth. You're wishy-washy. You're double-sided. Uh, or double-sided. You're uh, double-minded. Yeah, yeah. And um, oh, there's your chats saying you can see me in the text. I just saw that. Uh, <laughs> I sent those like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <I saw that. laughs> uh, but yeah, that man, it's just it's miserable. And it's, it is, yeah. those people that are looking for ways to be oppressed or to be angry about the system and all that stuff, it bleeds over to the rest of their life. And they're just miserable people. Like I know them personally. They're not happy people. They don't have any joy whatsoever. It's depressing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And by the way, like, again, we've been talking about atheists who are like, you know, fighting the woke cult with, you know, we're, we're together fighting the woke cult. And yeah. uh, that's true. But but atheists could get get in on this, too. I mean, uh, there's a certain amount of freedom um, that a lot of atheists that live on borrowed Christian capital experience, because a lot of the Christian capital, they would just say, oh, they're just brute facts. This is just how the universe works. And I'm like, yeah, this is how the universe works. But it's because God made it that way. And so. Uh, atheists could get on this, get in on this freedom too, because you don't have to be slaves to like what the science cabal is saying today. Because the science cabal, as you know, a lot of my atheist friends who are fighting the woke cult know that scientists can do all kinds of shady things to skew the evidence, <laughs> and so it's very difficult to live uh, as a slave to the science cult as well. Um, mm-hmm. No one's saying you have to deny science, but you have to be grounded somewhere. You have to be, you have to have foundations somewhere, and that's what's fun. It's fun to be there because then, then you can research anything. You don't have to be scared. Th- th- then you're totally free, man. You've got foundations in the word of God because God created the universe. It's it's fun to be free, man. Yeah. If only we didn't have a global case of science not being truthful and honest, like of recently that we could point to. Never. We ne- never. We would have, never. Would like, never maybe happen. if there was some kind of like virus that people just lied about and made up fa- fake numbers. People are still trying to hold on to that, man. They really are. They're desperate. It's got, it's got to, it's got to be coming back because it's it's one of the plays against Trump for the election. So you know it's coming back. I'm just trying to figure out what like when you know. Right. When are but they going to tell us to be scared again? <laughs> it's funny. Gabe pointed out his. How come all the states that reopened have rises in coronavirus, but the rioting states don't? <laughs> I, I tweeted back. I said, uh, "Well, it's pretty hard to mandatory test rioters. <laughs> They're that not really actually, up for the mandatory." That's test. actually fair. <laughs> Oh, that's a man. good one, man. But that was one of you know that was speaking of Vody Bachman on Glenn Beck. He brought up the point of why it's valuable to have a Christian worldview in science is because you believe in a creator that doesn't change. He created laws in the universe and things to base your assumptions on, your hypothesis mm-hmm. on. And I just love that because I know a majority of even Christians have never heard an argument for why Christianity is important to the sciences. Yeah. It was just so amazing, and yeah. I'm just recommended anyone to go and watch that show. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to watching it tomorrow. I'll probably watch it. Yeah. Another uh, show I saw today that was very depressing was the SBC Executive Committee put on this black panel. 
I think voices to be heard or something. It was American voices or I don't know what it was called, but basically it was the guy who's the president or the head or whatever you call the person that runs the SBC executive committee, yeah. the white guy. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He basically just put on five uh, black pastors. I think they were all in the SBC. I wasn't sure. Um, I'm still not completely familiar with all the ins and outs of the SBC. And basically, and honestly, it doesn't matter because they, they just get five black guys. They don't care if they're in the SBC or not sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't even know if they brought up the credentials. The important thing was is that there were screenshots of who, what they looked like because that's all the cred you need nowadays, right? If you're black, you're an authority. You're, you're in. <laughs> yeah, you're in. in <laughs> you know, you're an expert on racism. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Sorry to, sorry to distract you. Oh, man. It, it, was, it was so funny because it, was, it turned from – like what I think they were trying to get at, not the guest, but the executive committee and the head of the executive committee was like, how can we kind of reconcile and have a conversation about race? And it turned in the end to, hey, all the leaders are white and they should be black. We need to stop listening to white theology, white voices, white ideas. And Good. we need to have black faces leading, black people leading um, all of these seminaries, these co these committees, and all this stuff, and there was not a peep out of this guy. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> no, but, but I, I'm glad. Good, I'm glad that happened because what these what these people are doing is they're pushing the envelope more and more and more, and it's just amazing. Do Do you know anything about Black Hebrew Israelites? Yes, yeah. only because one of them picked me up on an Uber when I flew into LAX, and he told me yep. all about it. He told you, I'm sure he did. Yeah. So the, the black Hebrew Israelites, I mean, I'm not an expert on their theology or, or really what they're all about. I've watched a few apologetics videos about them and they're, uh, they're a cult, clearly a cult, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're you know, de they, they deny the Trinity. They deny, you know, they deny all kinds of stuff. It doesn't matter. So the, the point is though, that these people are, they're black nationalists, you know, they're, they're, they, 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 part of their theology is that whites are there to serve them when they get to the eternal state, stuff like that. It's just, you know, the most racist stuff you could imagine. Um, but their, their rhetoric and their, some of the stunts that they pull, they make white people wash their boots and stuff like that and things like this is, really? all, this is all seeping its way into mainstream big Eva. This <laughs> yeah. is mainstream. Now people are washing blacks shoes, washing their feet for no reason. It's just symbolic. It's just nonsense mm -hmm. because this is the thing. Like I, I know many Christians have been in foot washing ceremonies, but let's just be honest. It's very, it's very weird because it's not necessary. It's just, it's all a symbolic thing. It's an ordinance that God never commanded because right. back in Jesus's day, there was a real need to wash the feet. Right. So now there's no need because you wear shoes. It'd be but like we, having a, a cow sacrificing ceremony or something today. Like yeah, it, it, well, it, 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 at least that would be some, some basis in reality they used to do that. This wasn't, this wasn't any kind of atonement back in, in Jesus's time, but I, you know, I guess that's what they're doing now. So, but anyway, anyway, the point is though, the idea of we need all the white leadership needs to be black. All this stuff needs to be black. You got to give blacks cash. You, you wa wash our feet, you know, stuff like that. This is all cult stuff that's become mainstream. And whites are terrified to say anything about it mm -hmm. because if they say anything about it, then they're just proving that they're racist. Yeah. And it's, it's a sight to behold. And I, it makes me smile because the more it gets extreme and more and more extreme, the better off it is because we need to just face this for what it is. This is satanic. And so we need to face it. And say enough of that. And the, uh, honestly, people aren't waking up yet. So let's make it more extreme. Let's get crazy with this. Yeah. I'm totally on board with you too. And, and it's only because I know who wins in the end. And I know and that the victory is Jesus Jesus Christ. you're post-millennial, my friend. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a practicing post-mill. <laughs> That's right, you are. <laughs> uh, but it's true. And so we can say, hey, let's get crazy because I see good from it. And it's interesting. I don't know if we talked about it on the show last time or not, but I have never understood how you can be thankful for God's judgment or choose God's judgment over other things. But I'm seeing the yeah. blessing in it. When you oh, see yeah. Beth Moore wearing Elizabeth Warren t-shirt and yeah. posting on Twitter, like who- you, get, you ever see that movie Batman where, uh, where the Joker uh, attacks him when he's Bruce Wayne? And he says, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. That's what I'm. Oh, yeah. About, baby. Oh, yeah. That's let's get nuts. nuts. Yeah. And because you it's going to get so crazy and it's going to draw out everybody else who are closet 
Well, I mean, I'll just say it in the Christian terms. They were wolves in sheep's clothing. And they're taking off those sheep's clothing. And we get to see it. And that's the beautiful thing about judgment. Because once the lines are drawn and we get to see who is who, then we can start making decisions. Then we can start unifying. And then we can move forward. But until then, we just needed to get crazy. I completely agree. We need it to get so extreme that anyone who claims that there's peace would get laughed off the stage. There is no peace right now. Right. None. I, if you could see my inbox, this is, this is a serious thing. So I've been joking around, but this is serious. If you could see my inbox of people that are saying, Hey man, I didn't ever expect it. I didn't ever expect this. My pastor recommended that I read white fragility. My pastor recommended Jamar to me. My pastor did this. My pastor, they're bringing in black people to teach us about critical theory, all this stuff. Like I, I would probably say at this point, I have a, probably a hundred emails like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't, I'm, by the way, if you're waiting for a response, I'm trying, <laughs> but I can't respond to them all. And so, and yeah. so this is just happening, man. It's everywhere. And it's like, I, you know, I, you know, my, my heart breaks for those people, man, because they thought they were in the right church that they wouldn't have to deal with this. And it's just capitulation everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so everyone has a different situation. Everyone has to deal with it separately, but but it is good to see who's who. It's good to see what's what. It's good to see where people stand so that you can make decisions. Better now, better sooner than later, you know? Mm-hmm, definitely. And to the, the extent that you're uneasy or that you're fearful or have anxiety, I think is a good litmus test for ourselves to say, okay, how much was I basing my foundation on all these other Amen. things, but instead of Christ? Because if like it is attempting to rely on your pastor and church as your foundation, that's why when there is idolatry or adultery in the church where the pastor is sleeping with the secretary or whatever, and the pastors leaves as they should, the church just falls apart because the foundation was the pastor. He was a great speaker. He was the one that I got my, you know, my uh, source of knowledge from in my relationship with Jesus. He was the one I relied on. And so whenever that happens, you get shook. But if your foundation is completely in Christ, it'll be sad, it'll be hard, it'll be a struggle, but you won't, your foundation won't be damaged. Yeah, man. Um, so you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right about that. You're absolutely right about that. So I say bring it on. Let's get crazy. I definitely let's do say, that. Let's say cool. crazy. Let's get crazy because the sooner, it's like a band-aid. The sooner it rips off, the sooner we can start healing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's like, let's stop subsidizing the big banks. Let's let them go bankrupt and let's get right. back the economy and rebounding. That's right. That's right. Is that one of the things I did want to talk about? I talked to you about uh, was what to expect in this kind of war because I still think that we're, well, like you said, a lot of us aren't realizing we're in a war yet, are still saying it's peace. Like I can't believe Russell Moore on um, Joe Scarborough, which I can't believe he went on that that show. I think they're friends. They're friends. They, I think I I don't doubt it at all. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're friends. They're buds. <laughs> I'm sure they are. But he, Joe asked him, like, oh, so how's the SBC doing? And he's like, you know, we're doing good. We're just trying to figure out how to do things virtually. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what made that. That's when you said, uh, like, I want it to be a place where no one could say it's peace or you get laughed at. I totally he's just doing, thought of that yeah, example. I mean, some more just a liar. You know, I mean, he's he is. He is an absolute liar. Uh, but so I want us to kind of talk through and think through, like, what to expect in this kind of war? Because if people, it, think we're in a war or realize it's not really peaceful. I don't think people understand or are they're at least caught off guard when the war happens and the side effects of it. Like so many people are astonished that they're losing friends over this kind of a thing. And to me, I'm like, I, that doesn't seem that surprising. I mean, have you got that kind of uh, reaction from people? That, that they're, they're, su- they're surprised that their, their friends are involved. Well, there's just like this surprise, this, they couldn't believe they thought they had these friends and then they like defriended them. They won't talk to them. Family members won't meet, uh, you know, that the whole church yeah. example that you're talking about. And like, yeah. to me, that just seems like what happens when there's sin. I, to me, yeah. it just seems like what's happened in the Bible. There's sin in the camp. No question about yeah. it. Uh, yeah. So no, I, I think that there are a lot of people that are surprised by that there, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm even surprised by that, to be honest with you. Mm. I mean, I've, um, I've been in this for a long time. Well, I, a few years, you know, but, uh, I've, I've been, I've seen this coming for a bit and, um, but even me, there are people that are caving to this that I would not have expected it mm-hmm. from. And so it's it's very difficult to see. But I but I know that part of it is that just the capital that 
that Gospel Coalition and ERLC and these types of Big Eva people, they're spending a lot of capital right now. They built it up over years and they're spending a ton of it right now. Um, and they're, so they're cashing in. This is what their, this is their goal. This is what their end game is. And so they're cashing a lot of that in. Um, and so there's, I always want to distinguish between the throngs of people that are just being led astray and the people that are doing the leading. Um, because there are people right now, like there's one, there's one couple, um, that, um, I know that's in the process of adopting a, a black child. And so they, they're pushing some of this, you know, be an ally type material, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I would never have expected it. Never. You know what I mean? Not even close. And there's a many reasons why I would never have expected it, but I'm, but I'm seeing it now. And it's like, how did this happen? Right. How did this happen? And I know it's because of the capital that gospel coalition is spending. It has to be, they didn't just wake up one day and say, Oh, I'm going to start looking into the critical race theory. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's sad, man. So let me ask you this. What do you do with people that are claiming to be Christians, but just by how what they're preaching, what they're acting like, it's obvious that they're not? Like, how do you handle that? And I say that because I think forever since I've been in Christian circles, we've been so scared to call somebody a non-Christian. Yeah. Like there's like, I don't want to judge their heart. I, who knows? It's up to God. I don't want yeah. like, we don't even want to come to that line, but because we're in this war, I feel like we need to be calling out who the enemy is, mm -hmm. but again, but we need to, but I think there's wisdom in not saying like judging, like, Oh, you're a Christian. You're not a Christian. You're a Christian, but there's gotta be some kind of mechanism or some kind of tool that we use to be able to identify a friendly from an enemy because they're enemies in the camp. Yeah. Yeah. There's no question about it. Um, well, so, so first of all, let me say this. So anyone who's ever been scared of, of calling someone an unbeliever, just know that God uses that stuff, man. My wife, uh, was told by a friend of hers that she was, she was an unbeliever and she was highly offended. Didn't speak to him for a while, you know, was crying, was up very upset. Couldn't believe that he said that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but then when she really thought about it, <laughs> he was right. <laughs> And they, wow. they maintained their friendship and that's, that's how she got saved. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she, look, people are going to be angry with you. They're going to be mad at you. They're going to, they're going to cry. They're going to complain and all. But the thing is like, if they're really not a believer, then that's, that's what you got to do. Y mm -hmm. You got to do that if you care about them. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. so you just got to, you got to trust the Holy Spirit to do his work because you're not doing anybody any favors in, in, in kind of affirming their Christianity um, while you know, there's really nothing there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about it from the actions perspective and thinking of church discipline and holding people accountable, knowing them by their fruits. Like it is true that we don't know where people's hearts are. People could be in a bad season. I mean, I've been, I was a Christian and got saved. And then there were, part, there were times in my life where I was just getting drunk and I was, I was just over the world. I was depressed, you know, struggling with bipolar and stuff. Where if someone looked at me, they wouldn't think I was a Christian. Right. And I needed to be smacked upside of my head. I'm not justifying yep. it whatsoever. Yep. But obviously, God brought me back. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good now. Yeah. Um, not living that kind of life anymore. But I, I don't know if we even need to worry about if they're Christian or if they're not Christian so much as we need to be holding them accountable to their actions. And if right. they're going to act as an unbeliever, then we need to be disciplining them as that. And it's almost to me like a false argument that we give ourselves. Like, yep. do, do I need to treat them as an unbeliever or as a believer? Do I need to believe them or not believe them? No, let's just use the Bible as a standard. Right. And if you're bringing in Marxist theology, if you're bringing in worldly philosophies, if you're just living in sin, uh, you know, a boring old drug addiction or sleeping with someone, that seems like such boring old stuff now. Right, now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Um, so basic. But, yeah, so basic. Like, oh, man, that stuff is so elementary. No. But those things, deal with it as an action. You do church sure. discipline. You encourage them into the Lord. And if you and you go through those steps, and you don't need to worry about the heart. Right. You can leave that to God. So right. when you have, like, the Beth Moores of the world that is um, wearing Elizabeth Warren shirts, a party that is for the slaughter of children, advocating for the Marxist cultural race theory things what we deal with her actions and say hey 
Well, she should, if it was you know proper functioning church, the church should be disciplining her and kicking her out if she doesn't change. Like, so we need to get back to being sharp on our church discipline. I think that's what the answer is. And if it's somebody, yeah. a public figure, stop listening to them. Stop mm. reading their books. Like you mm. need to get them out of your life because they're not going to be helpful to you. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a, a really good passage in the book of Jude and the book of Jude is all about, you know, contending for the faith and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he even starts off the book. He says, I was going to write you about salvation which, you know, most Christians would be like, oh, that's the, that's the most important topic ever. He <laughs> says, I was going to write you about salvation, but I felt compelled to write you to contend to, for the faith. And that's basically, you need to strive for the faith here. And how he ends the book, right before the doxology part, he says, be merciful to those who doubt. So that's one group, people that are doubting, be merciful to them. I think that there's, you know, an expectation of patience there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then he says, Save others by snatching them from the fire. So that's another group. So those are people that are in the fire. That probably describes someone like what you were describing for yourself that were, you know, living like a pagan, right? You right. know, living under the judgment of God, essentially. <laughs> right. And then the other group, he says, to others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Oh. There's a lot of strong language there. Mm -hmm. So it says show mercy. So it's not saying there's no mercy, but it's saying mixed with fear. And then it tells you to hate even the clothing stained by the corrupted flesh. And so there is, I think, an expectation there that there are times when you're just cutting people out, off. You know yeah. what I mean? You're you're cutting them off. And I think other places in the Bible, it very clearly illustrates this. Is, this is what my whole video that the one that we were talking about earlier that got 60,000 some, something views. Mm -hmm. This is the whole thing was about because I, I came to realize that with some of these woke church people, I was now being disobedient because the Bible says you warn them, you warn them again, and then you have nothing more to do with them. And that doesn't mean that you don't, you know, confront them still. You don't, you know, you don't, you don't uh, do a video about how stupid what they just said was, but it means that they're not welcome at your table. Right. They're not welcome at, at communion. You, you don't, you, you don't have, you don't extend the right hand of fellowship to them. And that's harsh, man. That's super harsh. The reality is I have to obey Christ there. I have to trust God with the results there. I hope, I hope that a guy like Thabiti Anyabwili, enough people will turn their backs on him that he will wake up out of this stupor mm -hmm. and realize I can't put black identity over Christian identity, no matter how bad I feel. No matter how angry I am, no matter what happens in the country, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and it's easy for me because I'm not emotional about this right now or maybe ever. But I, I I mean, I can see easily how the Bible requires me to consider my Puerto Rican identity as garbage compared to my identity in Christ. I can see it easily. He can't for some reason. And the reality is it's not doing him a favor to invite him to your love feasts. It's not doing him any favors to invite him and extend the right hand of fellowship to him because he's playing in that fire. He's one of those ones that you need to snatch out of that. And I think what would do Thabiti Anyabwili and many others a lot of good is if people shunned them, cut them out, hating the even the garment stained by it. I think yeah. that would do him a lot of good. But until until that happens, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to take a miracle of the Holy Spirit to wake him up. Because yeah. people are taking his sin and they're saying totally justified. In fact, they're signal boosting. And they're saying so helpful to be the end. And because they're all concerned with themselves, they're not concerned with him. They're concerned with looking good. They're concerned with signal boosting it. They're concerned like the Pharisees were concerned about that poor person that they, they blew their trumpet da -da -da -da, and gave him two bucks. They weren't concerned about the poor person. They wanted to look good, man. Mm -hmm. They were like, watch this. I'm going to, everyone's going to see how generous I am by giving this guy two bucks. That's what people are doing with the Bidi Willie. They're blowing their stupid little trumpets on Twitter and saying, Thibidi, this was so helpful. Thanks for sharing your heart. Thanks for what they should be doing is turning their backs on him and saying, no, Thibidi, I love Christ more than you. And in fact, I love you. That's why I have to do this. Yeah. And going back to what we've talked about before, of when you don't discipline your children, Amen. you this hate exactly. them. Exactly. When we don't treat people the way God requires us and commands us to treat people that are acting in a way that's not appropriate, right. 
we're hating them and loving right. ourselves. That's right. It's and, so true, Matt. It's, it's so true because the bee is not a child, obviously. We're no. not saying it's the same discipline, but no. you have to follow the same God who has commands for each, you know? Right. It's not the same discipline relationship. Right. It's right. discipline, though. It, that's it's exactly discipleship. right, though. Yeah. And we're depriving. And, we're, and it's not even that we're harming others. And sa- we're basically sacrificing them for ourselves to make us feel good. That's but it's right. not even. It's more than that. It's you are hurting everyone else that's listening to him, seeing you do that right. and thinking, oh, this is OK. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. It's This is a thick web that weaves through the culture and until we cut it off in our christian culture it's going to continue to leaven the whole loaf and it's going to do destruction and we're going to continue to lose friends and we're going to continue to see church splits because no one's willing to cut these people off that's right that's right and the thing is like there are some people um, there are some people that do. And, and so not only are his friends not willing to do it themselves, but then the people that do, they get called all kinds of mean sounding names. Oh, you're mean. You're, you're social media sniping. You, oh, you're a discernment blogger. That's the worst one. They think that one means a lot. You're a discernment <laughs> blogger. And it's like, the thing is like, like the people that you call that stuff, they don't care. You know why they don't care? Not because they're like the most evilest people in the world. No, because they understand that God has commands for them. Mm-hmm. And I came to this realization way too late, way too late. People were, people were saying this on, my, on that video. They were saying it's about time. And they're right. I, I, I took way too long. And, and, and in that video, I said, you know, if a, if a white guy was saying the things the BD was saying about blacks, you know what I mean? Or He's white dead. identity, I would have given him about two seconds to repent. And then when he didn't, it would have been done. Right. And so there's some, there's some, there's something that that reveals about me. You know what I mean? That's on me. And so, you know, all y'all white people out there that are telling Thabiti how great he is, how helpful he is, how sorry you are that he has to deal with social media sharks. It's so traumatic. It's like, it's like, first of all, grow up. And second of all, would you think about other people besides yourself for once in your life? How about that? Yeah. And ask yourself the question of why is racism the worst sin for you to be identified with? You're so scared of it. Yeah. Because the culture you live in has absorbed you. That's something else. Yeah. If we are going to disobey what God has called us to do, and we're not going to stand up against the Tibetans of the world because we're white and what, what are people going to call them? They're going to call me a racist. That thinking and that fear does not come from the Bible. That doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. That comes from the culture that you've been absorbed into. And you're acting like the lots of the world that is longing mm-hmm. for the city. And you're longing for that kind of culture and that acceptance. And you you don't you want to kind of play the fence. You want to be you're 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 just too comfortable and you maybe don't even know it. But yeah. you have to throw those garments away. You have to be obedient to God. That's the only thing that's going to save us, guys. It's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, amen. That's that's so true. That's another that's another thing that this whole situation reveals. It's like you, you never you didn't get that from the Bible. I'll tell you that where this is like the worst possible thing ever that you, it's so bad that you don't even want you don't even you don't even want to you don't want to say anything, even if it's true, that could be you know, claim to be racist because, but I got news for you people that are doing this. Literally anything you do, people will claim it's racist. It doesn't matter what you do. So you, you are screwed either way. Yeah. Just just look at that Minneapolis mayor. (laughs) He was bowing down, just wouldn't defund the police. And he was the racist part of the problem. He probably would have been racist even if he did defund the police. (laughs) Oh, you think you're the white savior now? (laughs) Yeah. I was talking to, I forgot who I was talking to this about. But it is that one proverb just rang true in my head is the grave is never satisfied. It was like the grave, the whore and something else. They're never satisfied. And that's what this is. This is a grave theology that they're never going to be satisfied and they're always going to be consuming people. And you better not give in because the only thing that's going to save us is the foundation of Christ. Not going to be them. That's for sure. They're not going to save you. They're going to eat you alive. 
And we're going to see that. And we're going to see that in Big Eva more. We're going to see that with the Beth Moores of the world. We're going to see that with Russell Moore. And I don't think it's that far off, quite honestly. Yeah, I don't think so either. I, I think it's, I, you know, what I find interesting about, about uh, all that is that, you know, the people on the outskirts are getting more and more extreme. I'm just waiting for what Russell Moore is going to do because he's going to do something big in this you election so? year. I think so. I don't know what it's going to, I don't know what he's going to do. I, I don't, I don't think he would ever actually endorse like a Joe Biden or something, but something like that is coming in my opinion. Well, Beth we'll Moore is wearing a Elizabeth Warren shirt. Well, a lot of, I mean, a lot of far off. warriors clearly will yeah. endorse Joe Biden. You know what I mean? But you think um, Russell Moore is a different type than the Beth Moores of the world? I think I think it would just be it. Russell Moore is is gutsy, but that would be like so final. That would be there would be no return. It would take it would take a lot of guts to do that. I I know he wants to. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he wants to do that. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. Something's gonna happen. We'll see. <laughs> I can't oh, wait. I, I, I now I want to take bets and guess what this is gonna be. Will he endorse Biden? I think he's gonna, gonna do something big. Wow. All right. Let's see. We'll see about that. I mean, it's not that far off. It's already I'll June. What. I'll tell you what. Okay. If Biden gets Michelle Obama as his running mate, he'll do it. Oh. I Matt bet Chandler that's gonna happen. Good. I totally. I don't think even that's know if happen. that's even in the works or like even like I don't even know if that's a rumor. But if it did happen, whew. it's going to be some minority that's going to take over as president. Oh, that's it has to be. It has to be a minority. It has but, to be a minority. It has to be a woman. Yeah, that's the only chance anything. of winning. Because I know Democrats that have been lifelong Democrats that are so upset with this stuff. Not the cultural, not the the Marxist left, but the. The yeah. union Democrats, the normal people, the normal people uh, who like America, uh, they never listen to Fox News, would never vote for a Republican ever, is not voting for Biden and is actually listening to Fox News. I know it's anecdotal, but it's several people I've heard have been thinking that way. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, so any predictions on how we get out of this or what it looks like, how long it takes, any of those kinds of things? Or wow. is we just... is. We're going for the know. ride, and who knows? I don't know. I've 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 heard some interesting evidence that. Um, have you heard of like uh, the various moral panics that have happened in the, in America? No. You know, like the satanic panic or like the, the drug panic and stuff, where people all of a sudden get really moral and they like they think that there's a drug dealer around every corner or something like that. But oh, anyway, really? there, there's some evidence that this is another moral panic where it's like you know race. It's racism though. Oh. Um, and so there's some, you know, there's some cycles that these things go through. I don't know if I necessarily buy that. I don't know if this, I don't know really if this ends in our lifetimes. I have no idea. This is, yeah. this is just so, it's so crazy. It's gone so far. Um, it has to eventually stop. I mean, there's no consistency to it at all. Eventually they're going to all eat each other. But by the time it does, I'm just hoping we're not in like, you know, in, you know, 1984, you know? Yeah. I, I hear a lot of people talking about civil war happening and yeah. honestly, like, I don't think that's too no. out out there. No, uh, but I, what I was thinking of, forget this election coming up 2020. But what happens in four years? Like, could you imagine a Republican ever nominating a Bush again or a Romney again? Like, it's going to get mean, crazy. It's going to get real crazy. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's just so unpredictable right now. I know. It is. And then I just wonder, too, just thinking through what is the churches are going to split. The the leftist churches are eventually going to die. And that's not a mystery. I think that's a lot more certain in my mind because of seeing the fate of so many denominations. Would you agree with that? There's going to be a split. The conservatives, the people that are faithful to the Bible. I'm not saying conservative uh, political. I'm saying conservative biblically. uh, They're the ones who are going to have churches in 20 years. The split off of the people that aren't going to have anything to offer because they say the same things in the world. They're going to die off. There's going to be a few women pastors doing some lesbian weddings in these buildings. But that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, I I think that's that's much more certain than uh, what's going to happen in the country. I think definitely there's going to be some denominational splits. And the left side of it is just going to get way wackier and wackier until it dies. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen besides that. I wonder, I wonder when the actual splits are going to happen, though. I don't, I don't know, because it's hard to say. Because conservatives tend to just have very little backbone and all this kind of thing. You know what I mean? I, I know. You know, they, this is. I was saying this on my show uh, the other day, which I'm very upset because we had Phil Johnson on the show. 
I used to have way more subscribers on YouTube than Reform Jellicle does, but now Reform Jellicle is like blown us away. So for those of you who are new <laughs> subscribers, thank you, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, but I no Phil Johnson to today, though. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so what I was saying on my uh, other show was if you know, like in almost every fight scene, there's a pattern where the good guy gets some good shots in, but then the evil one, the uh, the guy that's the bad guy will start dominating the fight and the good guys just beat up and it doesn't look like he's ever going to come back. But then something happens. He has a flashback of his childhood. He <laughs> thinks of the love of his life and then it yeah. comes back and he wins the fight. Yeah. And it seems like it always goes that way. There's three phases where it looks like the good guy's going to win. The bad guy dominates and then the good guy comes back every single fight scene. I've ever seen. <laughs> that's, that's very true. <laughs> I feel like that's where we are as a church, as a Christians that are holding faithful to the Bible. We're not fighting. We're just getting beat up. We look yeah. like we're we're done. And I'm just waiting for us to just stop and not take it anymore and actually fight back. Yeah, man. That's that would be that would be glorious to see. Like I would love to see Christian businesses sending out emails with the gospel, just like we're seeing all these Black Lives Matters emails and these cultural, you know, virtual signaling virtue signaling emails of how they're doing better and doing different. I would love to see that from Christian companies like Hobby Lobby, Chick-fil-A love to see that kind of stuff like that's the things that we're gonna need to win this battle we're gonna have to fight just like them how how wait 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 wait, wait. how are we gonna win with chick-fil-a if chick-fil-a is in on this i know but i couldn't think of another christian company <laughs> <laughs> well, that's we're gonna need new christian one. companies first one. <laughs> <laughs> first we have to establish companies yes which we're gonna have to do because we're not gonna be able to get employment anywhere else i know Dude, right, so, I don't... so there was a, uh, I'll tell let me tell you this real quick. Okay. So there's a company that I do some uh, work for and um, you know, there's, there's been some talk about wanting to hire me, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, which, you know, I'm independent. So yeah, of course I'll, I'll listen to something like that, you know? Right. Um, and there's some advantages to it. So, you know, I was interested mm -hmm. anyway. So I saw an email go out about how we, we all think of ourselves as non-racist, but what are we doing to be anti-racist? <laughs> and I thought to myself, and I'm going to stick as an independent <laughs> consultant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I can survive being employed. So <laughs> <laughs> I know not one of those major uh, corporations that are having like gay pride months and things like that. The old company I used to work for um, when I, you know, I started my career has uh, their logo is all, rainbowed out now mm -hmm. that's pretty much what you have to do <laughs> I, I know right <laughs> be on the new york stock exchange <laughs> it's not enough to be a, a for gay marriage or not against it but you got to be uh, for it right that, yeah oh not only that but you have to be anti-nuclear family no, otherwise no. black lives don't matter <laughs> Yeah, I know. Seriously. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm totally waiting to. I'm waiting for like my clients and consulting to like hear a, one of my podcasts or something and just be yeah. like, yeah, don't bother coming in. Or it's, <laughs> it's always a risk, but, you know, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but that's the kind of nice thing, though, about not working for people yeah. that are those karma companies. You're like, you're a self-made man. You don't you're not beholden to them. Yeah, no, a really comfortable right. place to be. That's right. And, and the reality is that, you know, Christians do have. Uh, their claws everywhere, you might say. And so, um, honestly, there are people that are in, you know, that, that support me on Patreon and stuff that I've been able to do some business with and stuff like that. So there's always, there's always things. That's why you can't have fear of this, man. You got to trust mm -hmm. the Lord to provide yeah. for you because yeah, you might lose your job and you might lose your, your, your client and stuff like that. And that there's, there's nothing good about that. There's nothing fun about that, but God will take care of you, man. And you got to trust him. You, you, you have to figure this out. Because yeah, what we need right now are people that are willing to sort of have a little backbone here, you know, willing to sacrifice it all. That's right. That's yeah. right. And it, it kind of goes to with what we were talking about with finding your foundation in your pastor or in, you know, some specific public figure or whatever. Same thing with your career and your paycheck. And this is something I've had to struggle with just being an American. It's yeah. finding my identity and my check security and yeah. the job and the career and my MBA and all that stuff. But we can't have it in that either because there are going to be days where we're going to have to take a stand, where there are going to be times where we're going to say things our employers aren't going to be too happy with, especially with the the, the way that we're going in the world. And it's going to yeah. be really hard for us 
to be able to make those stands and not deny Christ in some way if we think that our provisions are in our paycheck and not from Christ. And so yeah. it's really important for us to get our mindsets right in this. You're so right. And, and, and the thing is like, you know, we've done a pretty good job of like staying out of it and like staying under the radar up until now, but it's not going to be possible anymore unless you're going to compromise yourself. So, right. so you're going to have to undergo trainings at work and you're going to have to sign documents that say certain things that, you know, you shouldn't, be able to say as a Christian, you know what I mean? Take like, those stupid HR tests. They are going oh. to, they are going to force the issue. They don't care about anything. They, they will not leave you alone. Yeah. You can't, you won't be able to avoid this. So the, the thing is like, now is the time for planning. So now you, 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 you've been warned. 80 Robles has warned you, your job <laughs> will be at stake unless you lie or unless you change your opinion. Mm -hmm. And so the time to think about what, I would do if I didn't have my job is now. <laughs> Absolutely. Like what is your plans in place? Like start networking, yeah. start, yeah. start getting your resume brushed up. Yeah. Start, start just building relationships. Maybe start building that work chest. Maybe start that side hustle, that business that you've been talking about, Matt, start yeah. a business and make, you know, make set goals for yourself for, you know, modest goals for revenue and stuff like that. So that you could, you could figure out how to do something. Mm -hmm. when they come for you because they will come for you yeah and they'll say oh just sign this document that says i affirm all kinds of sexuality and stuff like that and you sure you could sign it and lie but you know that's not that's not right yeah or with the new supreme court ruling it's as a manager you're not going to not hire someone because they're a homosexual or you're not going to fire someone because of that right um those are the things that are really going to be coming after us especially as christian companies by the way business or businesses are screwed in general because oh, yeah. now because now, like, if you have an underperforming homosexual, there's really nothing you can do. Because all he's going to say is, and they're going to say, well, we've got records here that he was underperforming. And he's going to say, yeah, but I remember when you told me that I was a homo. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was, an, it was a toxic work environment. I remember when I was underperforming that. because of the right. hatred and bigotry of my companies managers. Screwed, especially big companies. Oh especially my gosh. big companies. They're yeah, screwed. you can already see the lawsuits coming. Yep. Oh gosh. Dude, and I, I, I can't help but laugh because I saw all your stupid rainbow flags on your logos. I so know. you can have it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was one I've oh, there's a rainbow on their avatar, and then they were complaining about like being the uh, riots, like looting their store or something. I'm like, that's what you get. That's what you get. You played into the mob. That's what they, you get. They love it though. That's that's they, they think of it as like the way a Christian would think of being uh, uh being uh persecuted for the name of Christ. Like they, it's their counterfeit version uh, of that. They love it. That's a good point. They love that's it. They think point. it they think it like proves their dedication, you know what I mean? Uh, yep. You're so they, right. They count it all as joy. But they're, they're <laughs> demon gods. They just said uh, yeah, this is the other thing that's great, is it's become such a religion that they can no longer argue religion and politics has no place in the workplace. So we better be leveraging this as uh, Christians to say, oh, I, well, I'm going to start preaching my gospel if you're preaching yours. Right, right. Well, listen, listen. And the thing is, like, I, I, if I was, you know, yeah, nah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that that's a good place to stop. But I do need I owe you an apology, A.D., why? I have not been wrong for a long time. And I, I gave you some advice that was terrible advice six or seven months ago, right? Well, maybe even longer now. When you were first coming on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network, I said, AD, you're going to have to branch out from just talking about critical race theory. You can't just be pegged. You're going to you're going to lose followers. And because when this thing blows over in a couple months, what are you going to talk about? You're going to be that guy. I've never been more wrong in my life, and I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently, you're the man of the time, and we need this more than ever. Oh man! So thank you for you, not listening to me. Hey, you know you're you're welcome. But you know that was that was good <laughs> advice. I took it to heart, as you can see. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny because you know I have done other things as well, and I, I yeah. kind of experiment every now and then. And during coronavirus, of course, every nobody talked about anything but coronavirus, but um, oh, and it didn't go that way. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's absolutely insane matt let me just tell well let me thank you though because okay. your show I, I i shared your uh your promo for your show this morning oh, and i gotta you. be honest your show is is really good i don't watch it as much as i'd like because i just don't have the time but um i watch it as much as i can 
And uh, every time I do, I always walk away with something useful. Oh, and man. it's unique, man. I, I just don't think that there's 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 shows from a Christian worldview that cover the kinds of topics you do uh, in the format that you do. It's usually, you know, it's usually concise the way it should be, but enough information for it to be useful. Mm. Um, so thanks for that. And guys, if you don't, I'm sure you all do that watch this show, watch his show. But if you don't, check it out, man. It's helpful for life. Thanks. That's How to Build a Tent. AD, you have your show on YouTube. What, do you just search AD Robles? Is that how they find you, you on that? That's all you do. Let's do. I'm subscribed. I do watch every show of his. Uh, you should too. You can follow our show, Reform Jellical. We also are putting this on Instagram, which AD, you should start thinking about putting your show on Instagram now. Ooh, they have the IG video something. I have someone do it for me, honestly. I don't know anything about it. Instagram. But it's supposed to be the up and coming YouTube. So if we get in on it early, Hey, I'm into that. I'll, I'll check that out. Yeah, you should. Uh, Reform Jellical is on there. So if you don't want to watch it on YouTube, you can watch it on uh, Instagram, Reform Jellical. If you, know, you want to. I heard Russell Moore has an Instagram. No. I think he does. Is it just pictures of his library? <laughs> it's probably the worst Instagram page ever. <laughs> yeah. His big reveal is going to be I'm going to do a book review on Gone with the Wind before you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. He's just I so know. inept at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's the most worthless, useless person in the worst YouTube kind of channel, ever. maybe of all time. <laughs> I know. I like it, but I'm a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, it's good content. That's what it is. That's right. Um, if you want to subscribe and support us, you can go over to patreon.com slash reform You can watch this thing live, I think, because we switch platforms. I'm not sure how it's really working out, but uh you should be in theory be able to come watch and be part of the show and uh talk to us as we go along. With that, uh, saying goodbye for AD and myself, we'll talk to you next week. God bless. Fight the power.